Good morning, everyone. I haven't joined you for a while, but it's really, it's really good to be here. There's so many uh, amazing and inspirational contributions that have been made on this, on this group and this page. So it's always, always a privilege to be here. What I'd like to share with you this morning is, first of all, a sermon um, that I gave in my own church yesterday. Um, and then follow that up with a response to the latest proposed bill on asylum reform within the UK. And I, I believe that this is being um, modelled in other places across Europe and possibly in other places on the globe. And some of that has been, that the UK is modelling, has been taken from other places such as Australia. So, um, Yes, what I will do is I will begin with the Gospel reading, or a portion of it, from the Gospel of John, chapter 6. <clears throat> Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to Christ our Saviour. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. And when he looked up and saw a crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him for he himself knew what he was going to do. And Philip answered him, Six months' wages wouldn't buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. And then Jesus, and Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up. And from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. And when the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. And so my sermon. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Amen. I often find children pay attention to more than adults realise. And while they're seemingly busy playing with something, they're also listening, often intently. And when they discover that the people around them need something that they are able to offer, they're eager to share whether it's a half-chewed sweet, or a hug, or their lunch of bread and fish. At the start of what became a heightened awareness of the plight of refugees in Calais and Dunkirk, a little girl in my then village decided she had to do something. So she campaigned to collect blankets little stuffed toys, toothpaste and toothbrushes, and wet wipes. She was thinking what would bring practical comfort to what would bring physical comfort to children who were camped in the jungle. These were placed in packets to be given out to children. She ended up with a full truckload. And she wasn't the only one. So many of the public came together to donate what they could to those in desperate need. A couple that I was at theological college with have five children. 
and six years ago when their children were considerably smaller, they would take them on regular trips across to Calais. They of course would load their van with whatever aid they could, but the point of their going was to enable their children to play with the children in the camp, to have conversations with them, have a cup of tea, and bring a bit of normality to a desperate situation. Her children learned so much. That situation still exists. The jungle has been dismantled, but people are still camping out. Only now, rather than being able to at least have some tent in a regular spot where people can bring aid, they are moved from place to place on a daily basis. Another friend has written an award-winning book, The Boy at the Back of the Class. I hope it shows the right way up for you. And I will be sharing this and another book after this ends. It tells the story of a child seeking asylum in the UK. In the UK has been, but the book has been used throughout schools and has been promoted well by her publisher. It's received all kinds of awards. The proceeds from the book go to setting up help and resources, plus a house and a centre near Calais and Dunkirk for women and families, to give them a place to settle, to sleep and prepare food, to have a shower, and to get help with their asylum claim, wherever that might be, whether in the UK or anywhere in Europe. I believe people, not just children, but all people, want to be generous, to help those in need. None of us know when we might need the help of another. And when we help others, we're also helping ourselves. We need to know that someone will be there for us. The gospel reading could easily be interpreted as Jesus having noticed a child with a bit of bread and fish and was ready to take it from him. I don't think that's how Jesus worked. I suspect it was more a case of a child sitting nearby, overhearing the conversation about how the people are going to be fed, and readily offering up his lunch to share, innocently not realising it wouldn't feed thousands, but that act of generosity was transformed into a miracle, that of feeding thousands. One child in the village wanted to send a bit of comfort to refugee children in France, and that act of generosity meant that hundreds of children received something of the love that she felt. We never know how far reaching one seemingly small act of generosity may turn out to be. And maybe the point is that all of us approach, if all of us approach sharing as this child, there would be more than enough to go around. And I think that that's the problem with the current asylum bill or immigration bill that's been going through the UK and much of the attitudes that have been promoted in Europe, places like Australia. It's about fear of not having enough. We who have so much are afraid of losing and afraid to share. So much of the bill goes against the UNHCR, um, or the United Nations Refugee Law. It's international law that the UK helped to write and has signed up to, as have so many nations. Right now they're making it a criminal offence to knowingly arrive in the UK without permission. But the thing is about those who are seeking asylum, is they tend to have no means of arriving in any place other than through what are termed irregular means. Those irregular means are not illegal. They are not criminal. They are born out of desperation because oftentimes people have lost any paperwork they might have needed in order to get permission to come into the country. A 
arriving to claim asylum is an international human right and we are criminalizing it. Those who are seeking refuge, those who are seeking asylum, have no legal expectation that the first place other people consider to be safe is where they should remain. Oftentimes the first place that people arrive that we consider to be safe can become overcrowded and that in turn feels unsafe. Oftentimes people are packed into detention centres such as in Libya and there they are starved. They have no access to medical care. They are subject to trafficking for sexual exploitation and for hard labour. And they've committed no crime other than trying to seek a safe place to live and to bring up their children. We in the UK pay French police to harass those who are camping in Calais and Dunkirk. It happens on a daily basis, three times a day, every single day. Police raid camps, take away people's belongings, their sleeping bags, their tents, shoes are slashed, mobile phones are smashed, the one thing that gives them connection to their family. And we pay for that. And there's now a new proposal that we will pay France another 54 million pounds. If I'm not mistaken, I believe we've already paid something close to 180 million pounds just to the French police for harassing those who are camping out. We talked, there was talk a while ago about, about Trump's wall. Well, we built a wall. We paid for a wall. It's in Calais. You can see it. I've been past it. That's our wall. We paid for it and it's growing. There's talk about putting reception centres either offshore or sending people to Rwanda. How much money does that, would that involve? Putting people on a plane to go to Rwanda in order to keep them from coming to the UK where Many people have some connection. Very few of those who are seeking asylum really want to come to the UK. Often they stay in other places, places where they feel safer. <laughs> those who want to come to the UK usually have some kind of a connection. And yet we're setting up a process by which those connections are difficult for them to establish. And the last thing I'd like to talk about is trafficking. A lot of the rhetoric that's being used is about preventing trafficking. Well, the thing is, is that the harder we make the borders, the more difficult we make it for people to find a way to claim asylum, the more traffickers profit. This has been proven time and time again. Every action that we are taking profits traffickers even more. One of the books that talks about this is, is a book called The New Odyssey. It's been around for a while and I will share this later again on the page. But it's one of a numerous number of books and studies that have been done. I've also shared on the page a document that's come from the Joint Public Issues team of the churches work, working for Peace and Justice, and I hope you will take a look at that. On, on the page you will find a briefing at the end that talks about the response to this Nationality and Borders Bill. Please have a look at it. And those who are not living in the UK would still want to have a good look at it because it's, it's talking through some of the same issues that other nations are also talking about. I'm going to stop there. I've nattered on enough.
I just want to commend all of you for, for the amazing work that each and every one of you are doing. This is just one contribution, a plea for humanity, a plea to share our little bit of bread and fish. God bless you all. Amen.